Here we are, back at the channel, back doing something that we love to do, work on the cars. I told you guys in the last video that we had a new car for the channel, and this is it right behind me. It's a Legend Lime S197 Mustang. So it's a newer Mustang for us, and we haven't really dabbled too, too much with these things, so let's see what we can get out of it. The color's really close to the color on our 68, so they look pretty good when, you know, when they're parked out beside each other, hopefully. And, uh... You know, we wanted something that we could throw our, my little guy in, he's two, and put the air conditioning on and go for a ride and have fun, and not have to worry about all the fumes and everything else that the 68 makes. So this thing has a ton of bolt-on options on it, which is why we picked it up for the price we did. You know, a lot of guys now are selling these modified Mustangs here really cheap, and uh, hey, it's not good enough for what we want. So we're going to go ahead and rip off about 90% of the bolt-ons this guy had on here. We're going to sell those and replace it with better stuff. Why don't we go ahead and get started. So looking under the hood of this thing, it's got a Ford Racing intake manifold. It had a cold air intake that I pulled off already. It has underdrive pulleys, long tube headers, and a tune. Some of these things are pretty good, but the only thing we're going to be keeping is the exhaust. So let's go ahead and start ripping off some of this old stuff. Get ready for the new. Alright, so let's get started. I threw the stock intake back on here just so you could kind of see what it would be like if we started from scratch. So you have one tie down bolt right here. You have a clip for the mass air meter. This clamp on the throttle body. And one PCV hose on the outside. Let's go ahead and start getting that off. I already have this one loose. Now that that stuff's out of the way, we can go ahead and move forward. We're going to start taking off these two hoses here, unclipping the throttle body on both sides, and then we're going to go ahead and start pulling some of the clips down this side here, on the driver's side. Let's come in a little bit closer. All right, so now that that intake manifold's out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start disconnecting some of the wiring. As you can see, on both sides of the throttle body, you have two clips. Take a screwdriver and you pull this little red tab outward, and now you can get access to pop them off. <clears throat> Next, we're gonna go ahead and take off these two hoses right here. Again, same thing. Push down on the little light gray area with a screwdriver and you can pull it right off. This lower one has this little green tab. You're going to pull that up. <clears throat> Just give it a wiggle, it'll come. There you go. This guy right here fuel pressure regulator, that one should have a little red clip, mine doesn't, so we're just going to push that, pull that guy off, and then on the passenger side, you have the wiring for the alternator, we're going to pull that off. It just clips down on the bolts that hold the fuel rail down, so pop it straight up and that'll get out of your way. Now before we move too much further, I want to go ahead and disconnect the battery and then we're going to go down each side and pull all the injector clips. Alright, so the battery is now removed. Now we can go ahead and start pulling the injector clips. Alright, so the injectors are unplugged. Now there's two different ways you can go here. You can either undo the bolts that hold the fuel rail down to the intake, 
pull that off and the ejectors will come out. Or like we're going to do, we're going to pop the fuel lines off and then we're going to take the, in the injectors, the rails and the manifold off all in one piece. Alright, so we're ready to take the fuel line off now. What we're going to do is pop this little clip right here off. So you end up pushing this side of it down and it'll pop off like that. Now you take a fuel line tool like this one. This is an adjustable cheapie. But you can take this, you put it on the back side like this and then you pull it forward into this metal hoop. Inside that metal hoop there's a little spring and with this tool it'll open that spring up so you can pull the line out. Now there is some fuel pressure in there like there always will be. So what you should do is have some rags handy and when you pop that line off, if any comes out, the rag will soak it up. Here, let's zoom in on this. So what I did was I went and got a different plastic type. So this thing has a little split to it as you can see. You just pop it over top of that fitting. And now with one hand, pull this back side in just a little bit and push this blue tool in. Now you'll go ahead and just sl slowly pull this back one off. And there you go. That's your fuel line off. So wipe any excess fuel that may have leaked when you pull that out. Now we're going to go ahead and undo these two bolts. Let me zoom out. Now we're going to go ahead and undo these two bolts right here off the regulator we'll pull that off that's going to end up staying with the car and we're almost ready to start undoing the intake bolts all right so we're ready to pull these two bolts right here This thing just pops straight up. There are some O-rings inside, so just kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle. There we go. Again, there's some fuel in there, so try to soak up whatever you can so it doesn't go all over. We're going to fold this guy back. Put it back here for the time being. And we're going to go ahead and save these two bolts that came out of it for our new install. Alright, so we have all of the electrical off and we have the fuel out of the intake or off the intake. So now what we need to go ahead and do is start loosening the intake bolts. There's about five up this side here and the same thing on this side. Now seeing that this is a three valve motor you do not have to drain the coolant like a typical small block uh, Ford or Chevy or anything like that. Pretty much anything with these plastic intake manifolds you don't have to drain the coolant if you're going to go ahead and pull that. So we save a step there and we'll go ahead and start loosening all the bolts all the way down the side.
Okay, so we've gone ahead and got the four bolts out of this side, driver's side, four bolts out of the passenger side, and we're ready to lift the manifold off. As you can see, we're just gonna go ahead and pop it, that's it. So what I will mention is underneath the fuel line, here and here, there is supposed to be another bolt that's back inside here, down. This car was missing those two bolts. That's why the car never ran right before, and the previous owner couldn't figure out why. Make sure you have all the intake bolts in, please. If not, you have an air leak. So let's go ahead and get this manifold off. There you go. It's as easy as that. All right, so here we go. Now, if we look down, you can see around this port is wet, and around this port here is wet. The reason it's wet is because this inside bolt right here and right there were never in place. So as we're pouring fuel into the intake like this, it's coming out the gasket in the back and it's making all these areas back here wet. We're gonna go ahead and put this thing in the back garage now so it's closer to the tools and that kind of stuff. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull the alternator, the battery, all that kind of stuff that we need to start pulling off so we can get that supercharger bolted on. Stay tuned to the next episode. If you wanna keep up on some little posts here and there, come up to Facebook and Instagram, Official 710 Garage.